Jesus Christ! <laughs> really fast holy crap what is going on everybody welcome to uh, a very interesting episode of yami noob we have with us nate from motivation hey there uh, we will be riding this wonderful Ducati Monster 1200 S. Uh, he has very unwisely given me the keys to this bike for me to rip around a little bit. Um, so Nate, tell us what, what makes this bike cool or interesting. Well, you got a 2018 uh, Monster 1200 S. So for those of you who know, the Monster came out earlier, but there was a 14 to 16 model that was a uh, kind of the first iteration and then after that uh, in 17 plus they made a lot of changes to the monster they really made it a lot more aggressive brought over a lot of the electronics from the the Panigale and um, you know with the S model and the Olens uh, this thing's quite a quite the performer um, so out of the box it's a fantastic bike uh, but of course we have a motto around here that's uh, friends don't let friends ride stock bikes so <laughs> we had to throw everything at it yeah, and it does look like you've thrown quite a bit at it. So I think the first thing that sticks out to me is that, that clutch, huh? Absolutely, yeah. The Duca bike clear clutch is uh, one of the most popular mods for any Ducati owner that's got a wet clutch like that. Um, just the ability to see the clutch work and fill up with fuel, uh, sorry, oil is, uh, is just, it's mesmerizing. You can just sit there and stare at it. But yeah, you've got the clear clutch cover, which is actually a full engine casing replacement. Um, when you do this, you're, you get to choose your outer ring color, your pressure plate color, and your pressure ring. So you've got a multitude of options for really, you know, going for whatever look you're That's cool. trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, staying in this similar area, we do have the Duca bike rear sets on here, which uh, you can see a big beefy bracket into here. Mm -hmm. um, replaces the big heavy stock equipment and uh, just kind of goes a little bit nicer with the look we were going for. Well, being a monster, we, we, we try to make it very bold and aggressive. And, yeah. You know, that's kind of the beauty of the monster platform. Yeah, you got the tree colore kind of thing going, yeah? Yeah, it's a custom paint job we did. We we admittingly had this done before the the actual anniversary edition came out with the, the red, white, and green color scheme. So we, we kind of saw it. This is actually the 25th anniversary. And we thought, hey, you know, we should do something for the monster. And we got ours, and then Ducati came out there. So <laughs> we, uh, we have a slightly different take on it, but it's a tree colore nonetheless. Um, you can see we've got the Rhizoma engine belt covers here uh, that kind of really stand out as well. Yeah. Um, a lot of carbon through here from all Ilmberger carbon. The, the belly pan is actually a carbon belly pan that we added. Oh, wow. The bike doesn't come with that. We had that painted as well. Um, and I think the big piece too is that SC project exhaust, huh? Yeah, absolutely. The SC1R is, is the exhaust that's on there right now. Uh, this is the titanium version. We found it to be a, a really good um, option for this bike. We, we've had multiple exhausts on this and, and we've had like the dual CRT. Um, the bike can be pretty loud. I mean, a 1200 Ducati can be quite loud with something like a race exhaust. Oh, yeah. So the SC1R has got a really nice blend of, of you know, offering performance and yet not just you know being ear bleeding loud. Um, plus this one does have a removable DB killer option, which is nice. Some of the other race oriented exhausts don't offer that. Yeah. Um, we do have the full rapid bike auto tuner in here. So the bike runs very smooth, very easy. Yeah. Um, it's, it's run enough with this exhaust that it's developed its own parameters for this exhaust in particular. So you'll find it's, it's one of the smoother Ducatis you'll be on. Yeah. And you were telling me it's got the electronics from the Panigale and kind of the full, like, you know, brighter modes and all that, huh? Yep. So on here, you're, you're going to end up with uh, a sport mode, a touring mode, and an urban mode. Sport mode definitely being ready for the track or your super aggressive rides. Um, doesn't restrict too much on the um, wheelie control and traction control. It kind of lets you get a little bit wild. Touring mode is going to be kind of your middle of the road mode. Uh, knocks the engine power down just a little bit into medium. And then your urban mode is going to knock everything down really low to be a lot easier to manage through tight traffic situations. Yeah. Um, yeah, because with 1200 cc's of torque, it's probably jumpy off the line, absolutely huh? Absolutely can be. It absolutely <laughs> can be. So it's really nice to have those modes, especially here in town. Yeah. 
And guys, if you're interested, of course, Nate does run a pretty awesome online store called Motivation.com. If you're looking for anything for, you know, Ducati, you guys do Triumphs, BMW, all kinds of do stuff, everything. right? Everything, yeah. We specialize yeah. in the European bikes, but we certainly carry uh, products for everything. Yeah. Um, you told me you guys have like a special deal with SC Project. You're like the only. We are the exclusive importer right. for them. So uh, all the exhausts that come through here to North America, they all come here first, and then yeah. they go out to the dealers and distributors. We've been with SC Project since the beginning. Yeah. So we've um, we've worked with them since day one. So they're they're kind of our Italian family. That's rad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so click the links below, check them out. I mean, they, they let me drive this monster around, so it's the least you could do, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go take it out, have some fun. Alrighty, guys. Monster 1200S. Big boy bike. Big boy bike. Um, you know, I was just talking with Nate about it, and I feel like people overlook this motorcycle. I feel like people are in the mindset that, like, Oh, the Monster is just like the old one from like the early 2000s, but Ducati's been making a lot of work with this. The segment is really competitive right now with MT10, KTM 1290, um, you know, 2 Ono to an extent too. So I think uh, they got to get this right. So let's see how it is. Let's start it up really quick. Beautiful sound. We got the clutch swirling away there. Pretty sweet. Let's give it a quick little rev. It is a monster, isn't it? Let's go ride it. Let's go have some fun. There we go. So we are on public streets today, so we're not going to be, you know, testing the limits of its performance or anything like that. But I really just want to see, like, what this bike is like to ride, you know? So it's got a quick shifter up and down. I've got to remind myself of that. Um, let's see if we can... Yep, there it goes, down a gear. Oh, I love that. I tried that out on the new S1000RR in Jerez earlier this year at the Bridgestone event uh, for the new S22 tire. And um, it's... <laughs> down shifter automatically is crazy to me still. You know what, like in a, uh, I think I'm in urban mode right now, which is the lowest power setting. Um, this is a little, well, this thing is so smooth and easy to ride. Um, I don't really feel like it's uh, scary at all. And I mean, it's, it's very much in the lowest power setting. It feels very muted and numb. Rolling on in third gear, wow, incredibly smooth. Gotta love an automatic downshift. <laughs> it's really sweet. Yeah, so this thing, I mean, it's it's specced out, man. This thing has Olin suspension front and rear. Um, it is definitely specced out. I oh, got a state trooper right here. We're gonna cool it. I mean, this thing is incredibly refined. It, uh, like, it's crazy, because I think a lot of the monsters in the past were these extremely rough-edged, kind of crazy bikes. Um, but Ducati's made tons of strides in the last couple years. Like, they're not really these insanely, like, raw motorcycles anymore. They're actually incredibly smooth and fun to ride. Now, this bike has uh, no mirrors, as you can tell. It's only got this tiny little bar end right here. I'm personally not a huge fan of that because that limits my visibility on the motorcycle, but, uh, you know, I think a lot of folks do like that vibe. I think for me, I just can't really tell who's behind me when I, when I have this tiny little mirror like that. I think they were really successful with this uh, specific exhaust. It's not overdone. I think it sounds just right. Sometimes the Monster, especially with a huge 1200cc engine like this, can just be absolutely raucously loud. But this thing feels really uh, not too loud, which is great. Like you roll on in third gear. You can hear it, but it's not insane. You know, it's, you can definitely hear it, but it's not insane. Let's try out a different mode, shall we? Let's try touring mode. Roll off the throttle. We are now in touring mode. Oh yeah, big difference in power, holy crap. Yeah, the throttle is incredibly muted in urban mode, which is great, that's exactly what you want if you're in tight conditions and you're not really trying to leap off the line. But this thing 
is, uh, yeah, holy crap, this thing pulls hard now. Let's make sure no one's behind me. Let's give a little bit of pull here. Fourth gear roll on, wide open. Great amount of power, you know? Really smooth, surprisingly smooth. Um, it's not as, it doesn't have as much like mountains of torque as I would imagine it to, but we're still in touring mode. We're gonna put it in sport and see how it does. But here in touring mode and in urban mode, not really the type of, you know, rip your arms off type of insanity that you would expect from something with 91 foot-pounds of torque, which is a lot of torque, guys. That's a lot of torque. Um, I think this thing makes about 150 horsepower as well, so uh, definitely a quick motorcycle. Uh, I wish I had a little more time with it. We could take it out to some twistier sections of road and see how it performs uh, as it flicks over from side to side. Um, it feels a bit taller than your everyday uh, naked bike, like for example, like your SV650, FZ07, CB650R, which I was riding yesterday. Um, this feels definitely a little more taller, a little more uh, upright. God, that auto blip though. <laughs> that's, oh, that's great. This quick shifter works very well. Um, I used to pretty much like, as you guys know, I'm a huge Triumph fanboy, but I'm a huge fan of, uh, you know, Triumph's quick shifter on that motorcycle on the 675R because it just is so tactile and really just gets you into the next gear. This second generation or third generation quick shifter, wow, this is so great. It has that tactile feel, but just feels even smoother somehow than some of the other ones. This is fantastic. Although I will say with quick shifter up and down, it does feel like a giant scooter. That's that's my one down, that's my one gripe with the quick shifter that has the auto blip down. I do miss pulling in the clutch and executing a perfect rev match, but you know, if you're not as comfortable doing that, you just, this thing makes you feel like a superhero, you know? Holy crap. <laughs> wow, it pulls. Yeah, it revs all the way out to about 10,500 RPM, and uh, you can definitely feel it doing that. Holy crap, this thing's quick. Now, what's interesting is, when you pull in the clutch and try to give it some revs... The top end is unreal. Holy crap, it's pretty good. Now we're behind this truck with a bunch of leaves and stuff. Let's get over. Uh, you guys might see it blinking. That just means that it needs its annual service. Uh, Nate was telling me that this is a little calendar right there on the screen, and that's what it's telling me right there, so don't worry about that. Let's try out sport mode, shall we? Let's give sport mode a shot here. Off the throttle. We are now in sport mode, baby. Getting the full bananas out of this thing. I am doing 70 miles per hour somehow, so I gotta slow it down. That's the issue with big bikes for me, is that you don't even notice how fast you're going, man. Man, listen to that thing. Wow, this is a phenomenal riding experience. Uh, it's interesting, these newer generation Ducatis, uh, I feel like the Desert Sled is um, definitely uh, a last generation Ducati. It has much more of a raw, bare bones feel. This is an actually, you know, liquid cooled engine, uh, it has proper electronics and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Man, this thing sounds sweet as hell. I mean, the grunt you get from low down is just unreal. Like, we'll wick it up here. I'm going, I'm going about 60 right now at 5,000 RPM. If you just roll on, I'll wait for this guy. There's a mattress in the road. That's cool. You just roll on here. It pulls hard, man. But surprisingly, you know, it doesn't, I mean, I'm going in a straight line, I, which sucks. I would, I would love if I was able to hit some really proper twisty roads with this thing, but I just don't have the time or the, just, I mean, the nearest like good twisty road is a solid like 20 miles away, which sucks. But, uh, you know, just riding it around town here in these suburb conditions, it's phenomenally smooth, like crazy how smooth this thing is. 
I mean, it just teleports you to where you want to go. It really, it's a, holy crap, it really does. I mean, that's, that's the thing you get out of a bike with 1200 cc's, it's just this instant pull. Like, it's power anywhere you want it, at any time you want it. Um, it's a phenomenal experience. Like, fourth gear, 4000 RPM. You know, you're doing 80. I, I'm pretty sure I was just doing 60 right there. So let's let's cook it down, right? I got a 55 miles per hour, fourth gear, and you just do a little roll on, and that's 75. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, yeah, holy crap. But again, guys, it's a shame. You know, this. I, I, that's why I tell you guys, like bikes like this. I mean, this one, not as much. This is a more upright, naked motorcycle. I think this definitely belongs on the street, but you can't really access its performance. Like, I, I want to see what it could do. I want to, you know, get in on it and lean it and see how hard it could, you know, perform. But uh, you just, you can't really approach the levels of its performance on the street. Wow. Wow, that sound. <laughs> Yes, the first and second gear just feels absolutely mental. The problem with naked bikes is once you're up to speed, you have air resistance kind of, I mean, my body's acting like a parasail on this thing and I can't really, you know, goon it super fast. But man, first and second gear, holy crap, this thing rips. I mean, it's no surprise, but damn, it rips. Wow, this thing, I'm, holy crap, dude. Now, in typical Ducati fashion, uh, it's quite difficult to find neutral. Uh, my scrambler suffers from the same issue. Um, but overall, like, I think, you know, this gives you almost this, like, it's the same fit and feel and finish as any Ducati as you'd come to expect, but the, the riding position is not as leaned over as you'd think. The, the rear sets are not super high up. They're reasonably high up, but they're not too high up. I really feel like I'm just riding an SV650 that just has, like, an ungodly amount of power. Um, that's really how it feels. Like, a super refined, like, stupidly fast SV650 is actually really similar to this motorcycle. Um, I, gosh, I would love to take this thing out on a track. I would love to. Absolutely would love to. The lack of mirrors is a little disappointing. You also, like I was mentioning, I thought this was an issue with the modes that it was in, but you know, like, it, the, the throttle is really quite muted. It's really fast. Holy crap, it's really fast. And I know a lot of you guys watching this are probably gonna say, oh, Yammy, he's scared of the bike. He's scared to push that thing. And yeah, I am, because if I get a ticket out here going 85 and a 45 or something, yeah, it's 45 miles per hour here. Uh, yeah, I am afraid of getting a ticket going that fast here, so I will not be pushing this motorcycle. Um, but let's do this. Let's let's jump into this neighborhood over here, and let's just cruise in slow speeds, because I think a lot of monster owners would uh, happily take their motorcycle and cruise at low speed. So let's see how it does. This auto blipper down is just so cool. It, it feels a little surreal, but it, it's, it's just so sweet how it does it. It's so tame. It's honestly unbelievable how docile this thing is. Um, and that really speaks to Ducati's, you know, recent efforts in trying to make their motorcycles a little friendlier. Well, I'm not getting through there, am I? Let's rip a little Yui. Let's go back the way we came. Like, here I am in first gear on this monster, and, you know, it feels nice, man. It doesn't feel like it's gonna rip my hair off, or lack thereof. But you give it just a little bit, if you give it even a tickle of throttle that suggests that you want to go fast, and this thing just, just lights it up, man. 
absolutely just lights it up and it's like all right it's go time let's let's do this and again we're in sport mode we're not even in urban mode so this is like one of the more hard-edged modes and i feel that just cruising around it's doing a great job the, the torque is crazy it's literally insane how much torque this thing has it's intoxicating like the thing about torque is you just want to feel it all the time you know wide open. It's not scary. This isn't like, again, 150 horsepower, 91 foot-pounds of torque is a lot, but it's not, you know, an amount that I think would be insane. It's just such a shame because this thing, you know it's got so much more in it and it wants to flick and it wants to play, but I mean, we don't have anywhere to do that, which is such a shame. Suspension is really compliant. I, I mean, I've come to expect this from Olin's front forks and uh, TTX rear, but man, it's incredibly compliant. The settings that it's in right now are very well suited to this kind of riding as well, but it's just a, it's a phenomenal experience. This thing is just an absolute gem to ride. The refinement that it has is really unbelievable. Um, I think a lot of people overlook these 1200s in the naked category, but they are just spectacular motorcycles. You know, I think a lot of the other ones capture the headlines, you know, MT10, KTM 1290, the new H2, uh, I guess the Z900, but it doesn't really compete in this class. Um, but I think this is such a cool option. If you want just like that pure kind of Italian flavor to your uh, hyper naked 1200cc experience, then this is the one to get, man. And it pulls like an animal. The on-off throttle feel is fantastic too. The fueling from this uh, rapid bike tuner and the exhaust, I can tell it's just even more crisp than factory. Like you can tell right here if you, if you let off and then roll back on. Ducati's made really great strides in their on-off throttle feel lately. Uh, it's actually one of the big reasons I went with the Desert Sled instead of the Triumph Scrambler as my personal daily bike uh, because um, it's because the on-off throttle feel for these new Ducatis is just fantastic. It's really, really good. That pulls, man. Pulls for days. Super fun experience. Really, really fantastic motorcycle. I think if you're looking for proper sport bike fun, you want something. I mean, I'm comfortable on this thing. Honestly, I am very comfortable on it. Let me think of things I don't like, because uh, I feel like I've just been so effusive towards the monster, but it, it's a super fun bike. Uh, things I don't like. Um, I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's a lot of things I don't like about it. It's really sweet <laughs> um, as far as naked bikes go. And I feel like I've ridden a lot of naked bikes this year. As far as naked bikes go, this is pretty good. Uh, missed a gear there. Yeah, it looks like if you're lower in the revs and you try to activate the quick shifter, it doesn't really like you very much, which makes sense. It popped out of gear again. So transmission, probably not a good thing on this bike. <laughs> Thank you for showing me something uh, that I that's not very good because uh, I was being a little too kind to you. Yeah, Ducati's really got to figure out their transmissions, man. The one on the Scrambler isn't great. Um, this one, it's the same issue. Like I'm having trouble finding neutral nearly every time that I'm stopping. Uh, and that's just annoying. You don't want to be clutched in all the time. I get it that it's like, go, go, go. But you know, I'd really, I really don't want that, honestly. So transmission is a weak spot on this motorcycle. Quick shifter works really well, uh, but at the detriment of the transmission. 
it's hard to not like it, man. I mean, it just, it screams exotic, it screams fast, it screams premium. It's difficult to not like something like the Monster 1200. Uh, especially with all the cool aftermarket parts that Nate and his guys over at Motivation have put on this motorcycle. I think it definitely added a lot to the experience. Um, I think it's great. The dash reads very, very well. I love manufacturers that do a white screen with black lettering for daytime and then the opposite for nighttime. Not something I've seen a lot on newer bikes, but this one has it. It just makes it so much easier to read. I can really look at it and tell what it's doing and what it's trying to show me. Very clear readout. Um, yeah, I love that the speed is nice and in the middle. I don't have to think about what my speed is. I can just look at it, just know exactly where it is. Um, it would be cool to give you perhaps, uh, and I don't know, maybe, maybe it does. I haven't had the chance to really dig into it and look at it, but it would be cool to have it to where you can like uh, make only like a rev counter if you're in track mode or something. But again, the monster isn't uh, an absolute weapon like the Street Fighter, the new V4. Uh, that I think is your true hyper naked 217 horsepower motorcycle. This is your like more tractable, more usable, more torquey everyday monster, which is insane to say, but it kind of is. Um, but it's, you know what? Like, I'm surprised at how docile it is. It's not an insane experience. It pulls. Like, it's a fast motorcycle, but it is not a, a lunacy experience that uh, a lot of, you know, leader bikes give you. I've ridden plenty of leader bikes on the street. Uh, you know, I've ridden them on track, too. I've ridden ZX-10, BMW S1000RR on track. And those bikes are just... They are so overpowered for what they are, uh, at least for me. I don't have the skills to feel like I'm extracting something out of a leader bike that's meaningful. I'm just as fast on my 675 as I am on a leader bike, so that goes to show you. Um, and I'm, you know, a pr pretty average rider. I've done, uh, you know, maybe like 12, 15 track days, something like that. And I feel like I'm just as fast on a 675 as I am on a leader bike. But this is different. This gives you loads of torque down low. The top end isn't, you know, it doesn't rush. It isn't insane. And it's just an absolute blast to ride. <sighs> Man, it sounds good. Holy crap. <laughs> this thing sounds amazing. Jesus, man. But you can't, but look, see, I had to click through first to second gear at least four times to get it in neutral. So this transmission on this Ducati is still, it's a, they've, they've been struggling with this, you know? Desert Sled's the same issue. Uh, when I was at the Ducati dealership, I mean, they, they kind of joke and they were like, that's just how it is. And I'm like, no other manufacturer tells me that that's just how it is. So Ducati's really got to figure out that transmission. I don't know why it does that. Uh, not the end of the world, but it's just kind of annoying. Like, you just want to click up and... Like, the fact that the Ninja 400 can click perfectly into neutral goes to show you that it's not a price issue. It's not a quality issue. It's just like Ducati's transmission just kind of stinks. Yeah, it, it rips, dude. It rips. way it just lights up in higher gears is so cool. It has a great sound. A great sound. <laughs> this bike's awesome. Its transmission woes are forgiven because it just is so great. And I can tell it flicks in pretty quick. Uh, it's got these Rosso 3s on it, which is a great tire, but man, it flicks in pretty awesome fast too. So yeah, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up. I hope you had some fun with me on the Ducati Monster 1200S today, this 2018 model with a couple fun additions to it. Oh man, this thing is so mean, dude. It's crazy. I <laughs> uh, hope you had some fun. Uh, definitely click the links below to motivationusa.com. Check their website out if you own a Ducati and are looking for some awesome parts that you can put onto your bike. They've got you covered. They hooked it up for me with the uh, exhaust on the Desert Sled as well. I've got a great relationship with Nate over here. Local Texas business. Happy to support them. Happy to do what I can to help. So click the links below. Check them out. And I uh, hope you had some fun with me on the Monster. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.